All right, hello. We are here with Bitwig 2, where I go more in depth. Um, just a note, this is not the final Bitwig, so don't at all um, assume anything will work the exact same or be under the impression that I'm giving tutorials on new devices or how Bitwig 2 works. I'm just showing off how the beta, this beta is going. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then, aha. So this is new. I like this. We uh, we have this now. These these Q markers, uh, which we can like say like intro. This is cool. Plop that there. Intro, I guess. That. And you, you can like make more now, I think. But um, <clears throat> it also like makes the the top bar here a little wider. Um, if you do the show Q markers on, and you can insert Q marker, and uh, yeah, or double click, and that does it. And there's a time here. Reset fades, auto fade. Okay. Coolio. So yes. Um right away the main things that have changed is customizable um bars on the top here this is now able to be customized which is quite interesting and then we have this new bitwig symbol bar thing click this um this will show us like our account page and like demos templates projects and then recent projects um i'm assuming this is gonna this 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 page is definitely a setup for like the future collaboration purposes that are going to come out is you can organize like as you're going to be able to organize like your projects here most likely amongst people and this will be like the 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 kind of screen because this has like a really like not this kind of has like a steam feel to it you know like like uh gaming platforms that support multiple that support multiplayer or something like like steam or battle net and stuff this is what this kind of feels like to me like having this little this little drop down menu here is like who knows maybe you'll get like a little friends list or something and then you'll have people and they'll tell you like working on this project and you can like join or something and they can set like sessions to be like open or closed or or private or like blacklist certain people uh that'd be kind of cool and then in the settings we have all our regular settings here um we have, I think, some settings have been moved around essentially, but everything's the same. Um, this a little more organized, like so the pages are less. Then we have our our usual like package section. Then we have help, where it brings you to demos and user guides and things for developers and about Bitwig and uh, this. So this is the Bitwig Studio two beta two. This expires the tenth of March which means they probably intend to have the full version released before this, but um, I'm not going to confirm that or anything. Um, yeah, and there's like sidechain tutorials, you download open projects, geez. Tutorial for sidechaining, interesting. So yeah, that's new there. Um, everything over here on the right is the same. Uh, there's this new bar here, which is like notifications, you can turn off or on. So what this does is essentially like say I, um, Hmm. If I'm bouncing a project and I'm like, okay, it shows me in the top right corner that I bounced it and I believe I turn it off when I try this again, it didn't show me. It, uh, it didn't give me a notification. So that's essentially like your notifications on or off is in this corner. Obviously you probably want them on cause it will tell you interesting things like bouncing progresses and stuff. Um, the metronome is here now, it's been moved. And then all the settings for the metronome are over here. In here. And then something new is we have our tools have now been put over here. And then we have smart tools now. So when we place this down, um I keep whenever I'm saying like, oh we have this now, I don't I don't actually mean that for Bitwig 2. I'm just saying like in the demo, if pretending the beta, sorry, was the upgrade to Bitwig. This is what is available in this. This is what is new. I'm not saying that this is confirmed for actual Bitwig 2.
just keep that in mind. So we have the smart tool. So if I aim at the top of a clip, it's just going to be pointer drag. If I go down to the middle, it's now time selection. And this is actually the same here. So if I have this, I have the Marac tool. And then if I go down, it's time selection again to the first half. And that new uh, ability, I believe, is when you do this, you can actually grab it and drag it. And then now this acts as a delete field. So I can like delete stuff like or something. So that's cool. Um, so so this is up here. Command R should isn't rename, but you can set that, I believe. Uh, so what's cool about this is say if you're like working with audio, you can like quickly just like do this and then grab it and drag it. Um, you can grab and drag things like you select like this and you don't have to press any like short keys like you'd have to press two regularly. Now you can just do it if you're just aiming there. So the smart tool is nice and it's nothing like ridiculous, ridiculously precise or anything. You just got to grab the top slightly darker section where, where the name, where the name is going to be anyways. Um, right there so because of that they've also lowered the actual the visual data that is shown here is now much smaller than bitwig because it used to just like have this whole clip filled with data like as a as a screen but now they scaled it down and put this name section there uh, but you can shut clips in the beta like this and that's nice because i always wanted bigger i always wanted to do this uh what's kind of annoying and i don't know if this is going to be changed at all is the is the volume fader doesn't like stretch with it that'd be kind of cool and then same thing with this the the volume fade visual like the meter if the meter and the fade tool were kind of like stretched with it that would be sort of cool i don't know or or something <laughs> Um, or if there was some sort of note section right here, you could put in on a track and then like if you if you slid down, it would reveal it or if it revealed the plugins or something like it just it brought up extra information instead of just having blank space, something useful. That would be nice. Uh, but nonetheless, this is still cool, especially if you're working with audio or you're like me and you like to have like some wider tracks. So you feel like more immersed in what you're doing. Not, you don't have all these little tiny clips and feel like you're micromanaging everything. Um. Uh, there's no news in the color section. All the colors are the same. So that's what's there. And newly into this, we have, let's, <coughs> we'll use um something from Vila. I'm a liar, it's my heart. I'm a liar. Okay, cool. And then we'll, uh, so, yeah, so now we can stretch this. Oh, cool. Wow, how nice. So much stretching. Uh, this is relatively about as far as you can go. Uh, though I don't imagine most people are going to, like, really go over this. This is the most I would probably do, but who knows? If you're really trying to show off something, or maybe you're doing a mastering session, you want to have a massive, massive window. But then again, what's nice is when you open it up, it shows you the stereo view which is kind of cool and then you can squish it down and that's what it looks like regularly um yeah so we have this and then now some things you'll notice right here on the left side is we have fade options so we can see we have no fades and we can actually use this to adjust fades and then we'll see a fade actually come in and it actually shows how it affects the volume and then when we click off the track the fade stays there which is really nice because about every DAW I've ever used that has a fade option it does not show the fades uh, when you're not looking at the track and I like I want to be able to see the fades and it also shows you like the XY component that makes this uh, like it shows you the X length and then the Y length uh, like as in a square and then that gives you your like fade slope which is kind of cool um, and then it has acceleration options you can change it from acceleration to double point like so this is sort of how the ableton one works um it's a it's a double point so this is essentially what happens is you have like acceleration then you hit a zero and then it's accelerating the opposite direction so this is like slow acceleration hit zero then really fast acceleration so um so that's that gives you some like really purposeful fading effects, obviously. 
uh, that can be used in probably any situation, but then we also have the simpler option um, here, which is cool. And so yeah, that's the fading. Um, you can cross fade as well. So like, I'm alive. if I switch this to raw, I'm a liar. It's my heart. I... you can like grab stuff now and uh, like let's separate this and then we can crossfade and we can then actually grab a crossfade and select where it's going to go so the, the way this works is that this clip in the middle possesses its own audio data if we take this clip to a new track this clip has all the same data of oops has all the data of of this clip and the other clip um if you stretch it out, like take away the, the fade or whatever, the if we take away the fade on this, um, it's gonna have all of the information here. However, if we consolidate this the way it is, uh, it now does not have any information outside of the boundaries that it was consolidated in. So if we bring it up here and try to crossfade, um, there is nothing to crossfade so at this point all we're doing is lowering the volume of other other sections so if you're going to do crossfading in this situation you need to do that like that that trick uh this is how it always works as well uh so if you're doing it with like the the original audio like i was that works just fine uh because this will have the information over here so if i do crossfading it'll be nice and smooth <laughs> Like you, you wouldn't notice. My heart, I'm a liar. My heart, I'm a liar. Like you get the smoothest crossfading in this situation, and then even when like, um, doing regular. Oops, what am I trying to do? I want that over here. Okay, yeah, and then in regular situations and like. I like what, what would you be trying to crossfade really you'd probably be trying to crossfade out like clicks and stuff I'm a so if we had this full audio track I'm a liar, it's my heart. say you want this to start earlier um okay we move it earlier and then we can crossfade See, uh, things like that will happen, uh, because this is how crossfading works in general. You get double inhales, so you have to, like, kind of pick and choose where you want the... And then the crossfading can get quite funky here. Um, let's see. So the crossfading is crossfading. It does what crossfades do. But just keep in mind that if you're if you're crossfading a clip and it doesn't have any data before or after, there is no crossfading that can be done. So there's no point of even trying to crossfade at that point. Um, so yeah, but yeah, fades and crossfades. New, they always pop up. Really nice. Just the way I like it. So um, aside from that, we have basically no real improvements. I mean, like if we look again at this audio... There is, um, they change the way this works down here. Again, there's kind of a smart tool thing going on. Like, if you want to grab here, and then the rest of it's just, like, drag like this. And you can move sections around or or whatnot. I don't know if that's a glitch or what. But then we have, like, pan and pitch and all this stuff that we can now go around and edit like this. It's on the side. It was there before. And then we have clip or, like, whole clip, like, clip specific or track so it shows everything on the playlist and then do you want to see all of the all of the things being played at like this specific time yes or no um and i think this is new as well right here is you can kind of increase like the intensity of certain ones if you want it or not and then you can switch between all the audio events in here cool cool uh as far as midi goes we are not given anything new except for again we have clip and track two big buttons on the side fold is now a little more obvious um, and we've moved this off of here so now it's down here 
and it's out of the way. I'm not sure what that's for. It's probably if you have multiple tracks, you can come down here and do something somehow. Insert, insertion layer of followers, insertion layer follows cursor layer. No clue, but that's a new feature, I believe. Uh, as far as I know, probably something to do with uh, grouping MIDI tracks together without them being an actual group. And so that's that's all there is there in the mixer. It's nothing new. Same options, just as before. And I don't think anything down here is different. Nope. We still have a launch pads. I don't think there was any improvements to the launch pad or any changes to the launch pad. Um, and then we can go into the actual, all the effects here. So someone asked me, oh, has the sampler been changed? Uh, no, not, not even slightly. I'm just kidding. Um, it was changed, but not in any like functional way. So the only, the only difference here now is that we can have one shot mode or shot which is really nice. And then it's just really clean now because everything can be done in here with this modulation window so we don't need to have all this wasted room.